I bet you remember this photo, this crazy photo. Um, this photo, <laughs> remember this? Uh, this photo was taken on Donald Trump's very first foreign trip of his presidency. His first foreign trip was to Saudi Arabia. That's the king of Saudi Arabia in the middle there, the guy in yellow who looks surprised. Again, this was Trump's very first foreign visit as president. No other American president ever made Saudi Arabia their first foreign trip, but Trump did. Um, and that kind of set the tone for a lot of really unusual favors and special treatment for Saudi Arabia during Trump's one beleaguered term in office. Um, Trump's son-in-law and senior advisor Jared Kushner was at the helm of most of those decisions, most of that special treatment. Mr. Kushner himself made at least three trips to Saudi Arabia just during Trump's first year in office. And I say it was at least three because we don't know about all his trips, maybe. Of those three, one of them... Kushner flew there secretly. We didn't line, learn about it until after he was back, long after it was over. That was the trip that reportedly included several nights where Jared Kushner and the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman, he goes by MBS, uh, Jared and MBS reportedly stayed up till four in the morning, swapping stories and planning strategy, end quote. Shortly after Jared Kushner got back from that trip, the Saudi crown prince, MBS, rounded up literally hundreds of members of the royal family and other rich Saudis and basically jailed them, including torturing some of them, in the Ritz-Carlton Hotel in Riyadh until lots of them were forced to give up billions of dollars and any claims to power they might have. And MBS didn't just have tacit support from the Trump White House for that bizarre crackdown. President Trump explicitly tweeted his approval of it. Trump also, incredibly, supported Saudi Arabia's weird economic blockade of their neighbor, Qatar, even though Qatar is a staunch U.S. ally and they host a gigantic U.S. military base that houses 10,000 American troops. Saudi Arabia launched this big blockade of Qatar and Trump said, OK, I'm on the Saudis' side. Really? Trump even bent over backwards to prevent Saudi, Arabia, Saudi Arabia's crown prince after the murder and dismemberment of Washington Post journalist Jamal Khashoggi, an operation that U.S. intelligence concluded was personally approved by MBS himself. Trump later told journalist Bob Woodward about MBS, quote, I saved his uh, bass. Uh, quote, I was able to get Congress to leave him alone. I was able to get them to stop. Why? Why did you do that? It was so strange and so blatant. Why, are, why is the United States government doing this? Why is our government going out of their way, not just to excuse and paper over, but to really prop up this guy? How does this work? While the Trump administration was giving the Saudi crown prince everything he wanted and more, Trump's treasury secretary, the guy in charge of money for the Trump administration, Steven Mnuchin, he kept making ever more frequent trips to go see MBS, even after the Jamal Khashoggi murder. In fact, in the very last days of the Trump administration, Mnuchin took, it la took one last taxpayer-funded overseas junket to go visit Saudi Arabia. He had to cut that sh trip short because of the attack on the U.S. Capitol on January 6th, but not too short. Even after that, he stretched it out a couple more days because he wanted to squeeze in one last meeting with MBS. Well, now we know just how well all that hard work paid off. The New York Times is reporting now that just six months after Trump left office, Saudi Arabia gave Steven Mnuchin a billion dollars. Saudi Arabia put a billion dollars into a brand new investment fund created by Mr. Mnuchin. That money came out of a Saudi government fund controlled by MBS. I mean, services rendered, right? A billion dollars for a job well done when you were a public official serving in the Trump administration. But here's the thing. Steven Mnuchin, the, the money guy from Trump's cabinet, yes, he got a billion dollars from the Saudis six months after leaving office. But we now know that at about the same time, the Saudis gave two billion dollars to Jared, to Trump's son-in-law and White House senior advisor Jared Kushner. According to this new reporting from The New York Times, MBS gave this two billion dollars to Jared Kushner's new investment venture, despite all the advisors for the Saudi Sovereign Wealth Fund advising against giving Jared the money. The Saudi advisors who oversee the fund looked at Jared's proposal and, according to internal documents obtained by The New York Times, their response was basically, yeah, why would we invest in this? Jared Kushner has no experience in this kind of investing. 
None. Also, there are no other investors in this thing at all besides us. And our due diligence on their operations, quote, shows that they are unsatisfactory in all aspects. In all aspects. That said, MBS staffers at the Saudi fund told these advisors, don't worry, we've told them that after the first $500 million, they really, really have to hire some people who know what they're doing before they get the other billion and a half. You know, after that, you know, fingers crossed, they'll figure out how to manage the other $1.5 billion we're giving them. But we'll condition the first $500 million on them actually setting up a company that hires some people who know to, how to do what Jared is asking us for this money for. I mean, at least with Steven Mnuchin, he was technically an investor. He had been the Treasury Secretary. I mean, he had a money-shaped hole in which you could insert a billion dollars, right? He was like a money guy. But Jared Kushner, he ran his dad's real estate firm for a while when it got into money trouble. I mean, with Mnuchin, the deal still stinks to high heaven, but on paper, at least, he kind of makes sense as a place for the Saudi government to park some money, maybe? The Saudi government, though, then gave Jared Kushner twice as much money on more favorable terms on the vague hope that Jared will eventually hire people to do the actual work of, you know, managing their investment. Why was Jared worth twice as much as the billion dollars they gave Mnuchin? Well, presumably, in his case, it's not just services rendered, but services to be rendered. There's always the prospect that Donald Trump might be president again. Who knows if Trump would pick the same cabinet secretaries again? Who knows if Steven Mnuchin would get the job back again? But he'll presumably have the same son-in-law. So maybe it's payment for services rendered and also services to come. When one of the skeptical Saudi advisors asked why they couldn't at least cut back the amount they were giving Jared, MBS's staff replied that the whole point was to, quote, form a strategic relationship with this new fund and its founder, Jared Kushner. And cutting back the $2 billion stake they were giving him could screw that up. The Saudi government under MBS giving Jared Kushner $2 billion really does look like not just payment for services rendered, but also a down payment for services expected. If you had to explain corruption, if you had to explain being compromised by a foreign power to like a seven-year-old, this would be a good coloring book to start with. What are we as a country supposed to do about a situation like this?